that's how it goes. So uh, the outline of today's sharing, basically, you know, what is SEO? Uh, you guys know it as search engine optimization. Um, a quick intro on, on what it is roughly about. So I was told to share for 15 minutes. So the content is actually very, I, I, I try to put at least, you know, like four hours of content, I try to string it into like 15, 20 minutes. So it's very, very concise, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, on-site optimization, uh, off-site optimi optimizations, and of course, WordPress, right? So we'll talk about the Yaws uh, plugin, uh, simple sharing on the Yaws plugin, which is what I specifically love to use. Okay. So what exactly is search engine optimization? Basically, textbook answer is you know, the process of being, making yourself more visible uh, on search engine unpaid results. So there are two main types of results that you can find yourself on. You can pay. So your PPC, your search engine uh, marketing, which is you know all your yellow color ads, 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 uh, versus you know ranking for organic results. And why do people focus more on SEO uh, as compared to say SEM? I know I don't know about you guys, but I don't like I don't really like ads, so I don't click on ads. But uh, people do click on organic results more often. So I think it's for me if you compare SEO SEM, I'm more of a SEO person. I don't really do SEM at all. So how do you actually rank for SEO? I'll go on to share a bit more. Okay, so search engines. You guys know the three big players, Google, Yahoo, Bing. Okay, in, in Singapore, Google takes up about 70% of uh, the SEO search traffic, So, which is why we are going to share more on Google instead of Yahoo and Bing. Yahoo and Bing actually do share the same results. So their, their search system actually is linked together. So if you do search something on, on Yahoo, say you search um, um, say SEO. The results are actually the same if you search it on Bing. They kind of link themselves together already. Yeah. So generally, how do search engine work? So we have this idea of a search spider. You think of yourself as a you know, little spider crawling around in your, in your little web. So you know, people always say the, the World Wide Web, right? So how, how the whole thing works is basically one website uh, is actually linked to another website through links. Okay, so for example, I, I have a website seo.com.sg, for example, and I link to Robert. Okay, Robert over here, robert.com.sg. And Robert links to john.com.sg, and he links to everyone else. So somehow I am linked to him maybe because he's my best friend. So I link to him as bestfriend.com. Okay, best friend. Okay, then he links to him as good friend. So we are somehow linked some, some ways. So such spiders actually crawl from my page to his page to his page. And right by running through the web from one link to another, we rec it records all the information on the site as well. So on my site, maybe he sees, you know, Tommy Cole uh, likes to do SEO, been doing it for three years. So these are the information that uh, the search engine actually looks at and records. Okay. So after recording it, it makes sense of it. It realizes that you know this uh, this person is talking about good content about SEO. So I want to rank him for SEO. So it presents its informations onto your search results. Okay. Very brief. Okay, so how you actually rank higher in SEO, there's this thing called the page rank, and there's this other thing called search engine uh, ranking uh, positions, but that one will be something else later on. But basically, this is how uh, Google differentiated themselves from the rest, which is Yahoo and, and Bing, because Larry Page, which is one of the founders of Google, came up with this formula. Uh, you guys don't really need to understand this formula. This is not a mathematical class. But the idea of it is basically a way to put it is high quality pages are the more the more good pages linking to yourself, you get a higher rank. Okay? And what do I mean by good pages? So for example, if you are say Apple.com, you are say Amazon.com. Yeah, say google.com. If I get a direct link from amazon.com to my site, I'm a very good page because Amazon endorses me. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. So for example, if I have robert.com linking to me, it might not be so valuable. Yeah, so how it goes up, you know, I mean, more people will link to Amazon and therefore Amazon ranks even higher, Amazon ranks to me and, and I do well. So it's the quality of the page and, and how popular you are. So I, I think another, another image. It's easier. So think of it like this. So for example, you are, you, are, you are this page. 
you get links from Robert.com, you get links from Amazon.com, you get links from Apple.com, for example, and you do well, you get three votes. So it's basically a vote of confidence that ranks you better uh, in Google. So, uh, so for example, this site has three votes coming to this page. This page comes over, you know, three plus three, you get six votes, four votes. Very simple way of putting it. Uh, technically, technically, this page is supposed to do better than the other one because based on page rank and, and based on all, all being, you know, in the terms of equations, this being once, value of once, you get six votes, four votes. Technically, this page is supposed to rank higher. So back then, before uh, Google came up with algorithms to try to catch all the spammers and, and try to get all those people who are trying to cheat the system, this is how it worked. So if you get one million links, you get, you get you know, like one million links overnight, you rank for funny results. You can be, you can be, you can be tommyco.com and you'll be ranking, ranking for keywords like Apple, for example. You can do such things. That was how things were working back then. But of course, there are new algorithms that came out to penalize such spammers and, and people who tried to game the system. Okay, so what's SERPs? So SERPs is basically search engine result pages, which is what you saw just now uh, in, your, in your results pages. So it's not the same as page rank, but page rank is basically you getting more uh, quality links, getting more links, and getting more people to endorse you. But that does not translate into actually ranking in the search engines, because there are also other factors that, that matters uh, on why you rank and not someone else. Okay. So there are, there are various signals, but what I can share today will be a few things. You know, the page rank of your link source. So a high value website is linking to you, you rank higher. Okay. Um, the number of links you're getting, the speed of your link accumulation. So someone who, who gets, you know, I'm a new site today. You know, I'm, I'm one day old, for example, and I suddenly get 10,000 links. It looks funny as compared to a website that is, say, uh, one year old and you slowly accumulate 10 links every day. So by the time you are one year old, you get 3,000 links. It looks more legit as, as compared to someone who, you know, your first day and you get 10,000 links. It's obvious this person is trying to game the system. So that's how speed of accumulation works. So the types of links as well. Mm, what I mean by types of links, links can come from many places. Your Facebook page is a link. Your Twitter page is a link. Uh, Pinterest is a link. You can go to forums, you go to Hardware Zone, and you share something, and you, oh, click here. So you see, you see random people always talking, asking you to click here, you know, or, or sharing some funny links. These people are just people who are trying to build links through forums. Then there are, what kind of other links can we talk about? WordPress blogs. So for example, WordPress blogs are blogspot blogs. You know, you can share links. You can have a blog row. You can have a content share. You know, when a blogger says, you know, visit this website, www. blah, blah, blah. He's kind of like, passing on some link value over as well. So yeah, so there are different types of links. OK, so what is on-site optimization? So OK, uh, very quick explanation. Basically, on-site optimization to have good content, because most SEO believe that you know, content is king. So good content. Uh, there are many, many factors affecting ranking. But what do I mean by good content? You, will, you go to websites, some websites uh, are just you know blank pages. You don't have you don't have a lot of quality content or, or anything that is useful for you. So when you Google, say for example, what is SEO or how do I do better SEO, you get you get articles that are coming up with you know say twenty suggestion, twenty topics, you know uh, twenty points. I mean twenty points, and each point is well elaborated with a nice paragraph of well researched content. So these are the kind of content that Google likes and Google wants to present to you guys. And this is how uh, Google. Uh, gives you value, and, and therefore you guys will continue to use Google because it gives you good value articles and good value content that you can look at. So, so if you wish to rank for certain uh, keywords, you have to have relevant content. You can't be, you know, I, I want to talk about what is SEO today, but actually inside the content, I'm talking about where's the best chicken rice, or, or where do I get the best beer in Singapore. If you're writing about such content and, and you wish to rank for what is the uh, why are you good at SEO, for example? Then it was not it's not uh, relevant. So this is not something that you can do to no. So if your whole content is about chicken rice, you don't expect yourself to rank for SEO. If you want to rank for SEO, you talk about SEO, you talk about 
you talk about ways to do a good SEO, who is the best SEO guru, you know, uh, where do you go and learn SEO? You don't talk about where's the best chicken rice. Yeah, so con relevant content is very important for on-site optimization. Okay, so content is signaled through the use of keywords. Uh, so, like I said, if you want to rank for chicken rice, you talk about chicken rice. If you want to rank for uh, Amazon, you talk about Amazon. When you want to talk about, um, so for example, I was recently told by my friend that, uh, which, which website is this? I can't remember which website, yeah. But anyway, yeah, through the use of keywords. So within your content, you write a 5,000, 500 word blog post, for example. Within your blog post, uh, if you want to say, rank for where is the best chicken rice, it would be good to repeat this keyword a few times. So where is the best chicken rice in Singapore? You repeat it probably three or four times so that the, the search spiders actually coming into your website sees these keywords and they understand that, okay, you are talking about where is the best chicken rice in Singapore? And you should rank. Doesn't mean that you would rank, but you should rank for these keywords, okay? So there are a few places that you can also uh, put your content into. So for example, if you are writing a WordPress blog, your title, you know, you should be talking about where to find the best chicken rice, okay? In your, in your description, you should write where is the where where you should find you can find chicken rice or you know your best chicken rice in Singapore where you can find it. You try to rephrase it a bit. Doesn't make it look not so you know search engine ish, but as much as possible try to have the relevant keywords as well. Okay, your image alternate text. So when you put an image of a plate of chicken rice, yeah, behind it you can use those who are familiar with WordPress. You can put an image tag and and share this keyword inside as well, and also within your content. But one point uh, about onset optimization, uh, do not over-optimize. So for example, if you have fi 500 word article, you don't have 500 words of where to find chicken rice. To Google, that would mean you are trying to spam, you are trying to over-optimize, and this is something that Google doesn't like. And, and basically, recently they came up with Google Panda, which is one of the Google animals. We have three right now, but two, of, two are the more relevant one. So don't keyword stuff and you don't duplicate content. So keyword stuff is basically having 500 words of where do you find chicken rice, okay? And duplicate content, you don't go copy, you know, like one of the other bloggers' chicken rice um, manual and you copy it over and you, you treat it as yours. No. Duplicating content would signal to Google that you don't have high quality content. Uh, and if you do not have high quality content, you are not creating your own content, then this is something that they won't like and they won't want to rank you. Mm, URL itself is one of the, the ways as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example, you are mm, Amazon.com slash SEO. Yeah, you will rank for, for SEO better than someone who doesn't have that inside their URL. So slash A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, that's, that, that's one signal as well. Yes, that's one signal as well. Thanks for the tip. OK, off-site, so basically, we talk about on-site, you are signaling to Google that you are talking about chicken rice. But the other point where Google wants to see you being endorsed from, from relevant websites and from uh, having relevant, of course, anchor tags. So I talk about links, okay. Most people believe that content is the most important thing, but I think to me, from, from my experience, I think links actually still pay a bigger portion to it than than uh, content. I, I would say probably the whole signals close to about, might be some of my own experience, about 60% is still links, 40% is content, but people say that content is king. I don't believe that. So that's my own personal, sh personal thought. Lah. But links are important in the sense that you get, you get I was sharing, you get good quality links uh, from good places and, and relevant websites. What do you mean by re relevant websites? So if I am a website talking about online marketing. I link to you, which is your chicken rice site. I like to talk about chicken rice. So I link to your chicken rice site as compared to someone who is uh, doing a food blog, a food blog linking to your chicken rice site. Which one is more valuable? So the, the food blog would be more valuable in terms of link value because the food blog is talking about food. I'm talking about digital marketing. So if you want to look from the point of Google, which uh, link does, does Google value more? Of course, the food blog would mean more to Google than to signal more about food-related articles or food-related websites than my own website. 
Yeah. Okay, so where they are from, okay, the page rank of the site. So a high page rank website linking to you, a high page rank foot block versus a low page rank foot block. Of course, the higher page rank one has more value. Yeah. Okay, so the anchor tags. Okay, so when you, when you go to forums and you see people like to put click here, or it can be uh, www.abc.com, or it can be uh, foot block, or it can be the, the, you know, the blue color link that you actually click on. The, the actual text itself signals something to Google as well. You know, if I link to you, if I link to you as good chicken rice, you, are hi you have a higher chance of ranking for this keyword actually. So good chicken rice, exactly this keyword. So because, I mean, to, to Google, hey, someone is pointing to you and say, you are good chicken rice. I should rank you for good chicken rice. Yeah. But if, but well, of course, you have to watch out for not having too many links coming in as good chicken rice. You get, get your friends to go, you know, 10 of your friends go to 10 blocks and start writing good chicken rice, good chicken rice, good chicken rice. You might opt over optimize as well. So this is something Google Penguin as well. So if you have too much of the same anchor text, uh, it's not good for your, your website. So most people try to, I mean, for SEOs like, like myself, you try not to do too many of the same uh, keywords. You try to, uh, what do we call, dilute it a bit. Sometimes you just www.abc.com. Sometimes it can be click here. But these are older methods. La. You can link it for other, other forms of uh, key, keywords as well. So instead of good chicken rice, you can talk about you have a longer keyword where to find the best chicken rice in Singapore. It looks more legit than having, you know, specifically always targeting one set of keywords. And of course, the anchor URL, you are linking to the front page or you're linking to a deeper blog page. So if you want, you want an article to rank for a certain keyword, you link to that page directly. You don't link to the home page, for example. Then you guys can go and find out more about Google Penguin. But the idea of Google Penguin is basically do not over optimize on keywords. Unnatural links are basically, you know, having links coming in too fast or coming in from multiple sources or links coming from only one site but every page of that site. So if you have a WordPress blog, you put it on a blog row. You have a thousand page WordPress blog, for example. You have been blogging for 10 years. And suddenly you put it on a blog row. Yeah, it might damage you as well. Yeah. So what Mm. And then your competitor go and buy some and wet you. Stuff, and then mm. like put unnatural things towards your site. Yeah, that can work. What? So what? What should? Is there anything that we can do to prevent this? Uh, there's no real way to actually prevent this. Uh, if if your competitors are so so lame and they want to do such things to you, they can do that. But uh, there is this tool in, in Google Webmaster Tools that you can actually disavow such links. So if you do find out, la, but the, I, mean, I mean, SEO is a very dynamic thing. You have no idea whether this link is, is harming you or actually helping you. You don't even realize where the links are coming from sometimes. So it's very difficult to find out. It's very, very difficult to find out. But of course, I can, I can decide to, to, you know, I don't like Robert, for example. I can, I can just throw like 10,000 links and rank him for some, some funny, funny keyword that I, I hope he, he People searches and finds him. Yeah, I can, but uh, but you can actually disavow it. So Google Webmaster Tools is one of the tools that Google actually provides you with that you can use to check your backlinks from. But it's not very updated. It's not very strong. There are also a lot of other paid and free services online. But I would say if someone really do do engage in such activities, then you are, if you are able to find out where it's coming from, you can disavow the links. So you're telling Google, don't count this. It's not done by me. Or no, uh, I don't want these links to be endorsing me. You know? Or it can be coming from, say, a pawn site. Yeah, you have links coming from a pawn site. That's not good. Uh, it's coming from a, a rubbish site. Yeah, it's not good. So no count it. Yeah, you can do that. But that's if you can find out where it's coming from. Yeah, if you can find out where it's coming from. Yeah, good question. Okay, uh, if you're talking about ranking in, okay, because there's google.com, there's google.com.sg. So what, what is relevant for us when we're using Google, most of the uh, results come out from the .com.sg site. So it's a Singapore targeted site. So if you're getting, you want to rank in Singapore, it's good to get links from .sg websites because it's more local based. So for example, I'm, I'm, rank, I'm trying to rank for SEO Singapore. 
So getting links from .com.sg sites are more favorable, actually, yeah, because you're more relevant to the Singapore-based kind of uh, keywords. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yep. Harmful. Yeah. yeah, it works. So what, what it works. It works. Uh, so yeah. it's actually good if you are saying it's not from harmful sources. So it's not like porn sites or or highly unrelevant sites. So if it's low page rank sites, actually having a lot of low page rank sites are actually good for you because you know like one plus one plus one vote, you get ten votes. Yeah. So not necessarily you must get a 10 vote website coming to you all the time. You can get a 1 plus 1 plus 1 vote and slowly work your way up. Yeah. So it, it, it's good as long as it's not harmful. You know, as long as it's not, not having a page that it has 1,000 pages, one time linking to you, 1,000 links. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. So if you have 10,000 links coming in of low page rank, no, that's not good. Yeah. But if 10, 10 every week, slowly accumulating, it looks natural, it looks nice. Yeah. Let's say I have a blog mm -hmm. and I do all the hard work to mm -hmm. produce original content. Yep. The content is very good. Yep. And for some reason, uh, a lot of people copy my content mm -hmm. and put it on the website. Mm -hmm. So who will get penalized? You know, like how will Google recognize that? Okay, I'm the first person to post it. Mm -hmm. And uh, will I be equally penalized, or all, only my competitors will be all the person who copied from my site? Okay, good question. Okay, so. Google, Google's algorithms are able to actually compare whether, you know, of course, someone is duplicating your, your content and basically copying it over and just using the content. So even if you, if you which is why most si websites you actually see like Copyscape protected and all this kind of thing. You know, even Copyscape can actually run all the searches on the whole internet and, and, and crawl and find out whether someone is duplicating you. Google can definitely do that. Okay, but one, uh, sadly, for those people who produce original content, unless you are like the guru in, in the field itself, I myself, what I can do is I can rewrite your content. So you know you have ten reasons uh, why you should come to Singapore uh, and travel. Okay, I can I can take five reasons. I can rewrite it in my own way. You know I mean English. You can rewrite it in so many multiple ways. You can change the content slightly. You can change the topic slightly, and it's still your article. And Google might not be able to actually differentiate that very well, because to him to Google. You know, like uh, because Singapore uh, has good shopping, then you change the topic into shopping is good in Singapore. Google gets a bit confused. Yeah, so they are not that perfect yet. So uh, some ways of redoing good content on your website can be going to three different websites, getting two topics over here, two topics over there, and and rewriting as if it's the whole thing. It's yours, and and it can actually work. Yeah, uh, sadly speaking, it can actually work. So this is how some people produce good content on their websites. Yeah, but of course, you get articles that are only yours. You know, your own opinions or or or, or someone something that can, someone can copy or your guru in the site, and everyone knows that it's your 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 own intellectual property. But if you're just a small-time blogger with good content, highly likely you get copied and and you get lost. Uh, you will lose it. It's legit. Yeah, so you, you can go to directories, you pay for it. High page rank directories, yes, it counts. Uh, but it used to count even more, but now they kind of like discounted already. Yeah, so but that is one strategy. That's one link source as well. So you can go to um, the most famous paid ones are your Demos, DMOZ, your Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo is very expensive. Yeah. yeah. yeah they recently shut it down. Yeah, but there are a lot of directories that are. Very expensive, but they are very, very useful as well. Yahoo used to be very useful. One of the, one of the top directories. Yeah. If, if, if the client just pays for AdWords, does mm -mm. that actually no. count? No. Doesn't help. Right. Doesn't help. So if you are doing AdWords and you're doing SEO at the same time, does it help you to rank for SEO? No. I think it's a conspiracy theory. No. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I've read somewhere is that Google ignores everything past so many characters on a website. Is that the case anymore? Explain that, again. That if the Pages, mm -mm. say four pages long. Mm -hmm. They only read so many characters and stuff. Or do they read the whole thing? You're talking about the content, the article itself, right? Uh, actually, no. The 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 more content you have, the more Google actually likes it. So of of course, the optimum point to actually write a an article for for your blog, for example, I always advise to go more than five hundred words at least. Of course, the best best optimized uh length is about one thousand. 
So if you want to treat it as a good article, if you have content that is lesser than 300 words, it's, it's actually not very useful in, in SEO terms. Yeah, you, you basically, to Google, length is also one thing. Yeah, so we try to write articles that are at least 500 to about 800 words, that'll be nice. Yeah, so the longer you are, the m <coughs> but of course, if it's, it, if it's repetitive and it's not useful, then of course, there's no point writing it. So a good article, 1,000, 2,000 words, I think. Yeah, read, write articles for humans. What Google always like to, sh to say, you know, like write things that humans would really want to read, and, and, and you will keep the human staying on the site long enough because that's also one signal. If you guys use analytics, Google Analytics, they are able to trace how long someone stays on your site as well. That's also one signal. You come in, hey, it's not relevant. I go up, I bounce. So within, within the first 10 seconds, I don't stay. I bounce. To Google, you, guys, you are not a good site as well. Yeah, if you, you are not writing for humans. You are writing for the, for the spiders to see. Yeah, people, people come in, you can tell. You, there are some websites that you go in, hey, this is not what I wanted. So you, you click back. When you click back, it's a bad signal to you. It's yeah. beneficial to use the Google, Google analytics. analytics. Yeah. yeah, it is. So if you see your bounce rate is 70%, then you better do, do something about your content. But if your bounce rate is 20%, wow, perfect. That's good. Yeah. No, I mean, for the 10%. SEO's sake, yeah. it's good to have yeah. a lower bounce rate. <coughs> yeah. Okay, so just now we're talking about source of links, right? So there are a lot of source of links that we can talk about. So um, it can be social bookmarking, which is your Pinterest, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Instagram, these are all your places. Um, forums, your hardware zone, whatever not. YouTube, uh, comment marketing, you can go to a lot of places and write stupid comments and get links as well. Blogging, WordPress, um, Tumblr. Your mm. hmm. Good question. Let me think of it. Let me get back to you later on. Okay, news, news PR pages. So, you know, like free PR submission pages, you can write, you know, oh, uh, I'm going to have a discount day for my chicken rice store today. I'm going to write a nice PR press release and I'm going to go to the free sites and I submit. Yeah, those count as well. Okay, the rest, infographics, social networks, document sharing. There are a few document sharing sites, but I can't remember offhand. Stupid sites. Hmm. Oh yeah, slide share, slide share, yeah. slide share is one. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about Yao's SEO plugin. <coughs> so when you when you actually use Yao's SEO plugin on your websites, um, this is more relevant for your pages and also your post pages. Yeah, those who use WordPress. So when you when you write an article, um, how you roughly, okay, I only have two, two very simple pages on this. So you want to let Yao help you optimize for a certain keyword. Okay, so how they help you optimize is you let him know that your focus keyword would be WordPress SEO plugin. So what, what Yao would actually force you to do is to repeat this keyword a few times at a few places. Okay, so for example, within the URL itself. Okay. So now the, it's yaws.com slash WordPress slash SEO. So you see page URL, it says no. But if, if it's actually slash WordPress dash SEO dash plugin, it will say yes. So you're optimized for your URL. Okay. Uh, your article heading, so WordPress SEO plugin. Eh? It's appearing and it's bolded. So it's a yes over here. On your page title, in, within your content, which is probably within your blog post itself, it repeated 13 times, okay? And in your meta description. So this, when you search Google, you see the title, you see the description, it, it says something like, uh, uh, this website is the leading website for blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so this is what we call the meta descriptions. So within the meta descriptions, you repeated it. Okay, normally we don't do it two times, uh, we do it once. Uh. Two times is a bit too much, yeah. Then you can use the Yao's plugin to actually re-edit your SEO title as well. So your actual title can be something, and you can use it to rewrite the, the title and put in your descriptions. So, yeah. So the second page of Yao's is your page analysis. So it will actually tell you things like you know uh, it does not appear in your URL, which is the, the search questions over there. So if it's not in your URL, go in. Edit in your URL, change your URL, 
you know, uh, your website doesn't have any outbound links. So good sites share, bring traffic to other sites. So I mean, in the eyes of Google, the spider always wishes to be climbing, to be crawling around the whole internet. He doesn't like to reach a, 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 a room and there's four walls and he has nowhere to escape. So you always be good if you have an outbound link. But of course, it must go to a relevant site. Yeah. If it's not relevant, then it's not very useful for Google and they don't like it. OK, copy score. This basically wants you to, forces you to write in a way that it's good English for humans to read. If you are writing in you know, like very complicated words, that, you know, like very colorful languages that, that only you understand, and it's not simple language that, that everyone else can understand, which means you're not a good teacher, for example, yeah, then it's not good. So write in content that is simple, understandable, yeah, idiot proof. Images, do you have the, the keyword ex itself in your, in your image tag? You know, is it in the first paragraph? So all these kind of suggestions will be green. So you want to use this plugin, see all the greens. If everything is green, great. You are well optimized. And, and these are a lot of signals that they will actually help you to, to improve on on your optimization, which is what I shared in front. So having it in your meta description, having it in your phrases, you know, the keyword density, you don't want it. It's 1.3%. So out of 500 words, maybe you only have 15 words or, or like 10 words of it being this keyword. You, if it's 100%, then you're basically repeating it, the whole 500 words, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So you guys can go back and play with it. So I think that's all for my sharing today. So if you have any questions, yeah. Thanks. Oops, oh, I took so long. Yeah. If you have any questions, uh, I don't mind. How many of them actually make money? I, I, I wouldn't really know because it depends on how you make money. Bloggers have, have various sources. You have your AdWords, you have your AdSense money, and you have your, your getting, getting sponsors and whatnot. So I, I cannot tell how many of them actually do make money from SEO unless you're writing financial related content that a lot of people you know how to make money kind of articles and you can rank for number one in the world, yeah, probably you will, you will get some money. But if you want to optimize yourself to be number one for how to make money, you probably take you like lots of lots of time and effort. <laughs> This is a very gray view. So if it's sponsored, you can declare it on, on your website, but Google doesn't care whether you actually say that it's sponsored or not. Yeah, but uh, you can get penalized, you cannot get penalized. It's a very gray area, but it counts. So if you get sponsored links and from Xiaxie, for example, uh, Xiaxie has a lot of people linking to her. She links to you, well done. You're probably going to rank very well in Singapore. Yeah, or it's like some other good blogger. What I normally do is, um, you must find try to find out why uh, you can't get that score. Normally, it's it's. If it's one or two red dots, for example, just now you know, like three or three orange ones and all green, right? So you are most likely gonna get green, yeah. But uh, if you if you do your best and you try to do and, and you can't get it to even a green, I think that's that's the best that you can do on your on site, yeah. Then you just focus more on your off site link building, yeah. Because there's some limits to some templates, for example, some templates, uh, somehow they don't record that you have actual content on your page. Yeah, some templates don't 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 reflect that for yours. So uh, you just have to do more off-site, or it actually counts, but you just don't see on yours. Yours doesn't capture everything. So it's only for those you know, page, page pages or the post pages. Yeah, some templates don't work very well. I, I get what you mean. <laughs>
mm. like 80 percent Google and then mm. another thing that there's a you know another thing that I can Google and it's like search traffic versus the links um you can be a very popular site <coughs> but I would say links are still more important yeah so uh, just watch out on who's linking to you and how people are linking to you. So if really another penguin algorithm comes in and realize that your links are actually fishy, then you will still lose position. Yeah, you know, Apple.com can still get a lot of sites but not rank for Apple keyword yeah, because they are doing something fishy. Yeah. I'm not saying Apple, but yeah, just an example. What app is this? I don't know, it was two months ago. They uh -huh. I, I'm not a technical guy, but I uh -huh. think that they, uh, the back end is changed completely, mm -hmm. and now, now it's possible to use the, the app. You can download to the desktop, to Lisa uh -huh. in the browser, and if this would be URL, uh -huh. you download to your computer. You mean for what press is it? I'm not very familiar with. Are you talking about Calypso? That's the code name for the app, but now they just call it that. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, okay. I'm not a lot of familiar. plugins designed for WordPress nowadays are not yet fully integrated with Calypso. Give it time, eventually it will go there. But for now, I think you're quite restricted if I don't know. Yeah, so it's not yet. I, I can't, you can't really yeah. create it. So yeah. Think of it as a progress. Eventually, Calypso will get there, but it's not yet there yet. Yeah. Any more questions? So we have one last question for <laughs> him, and then afterwards, you can catch him uh, after all talks. OK. Uh. Maybe we'll <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him, him decide. Moments <laughs> for use in the years. Mm -hmm. Performance in terms of loading speed, and yeah. I don't think it affects that much. Yeah. Then they have another uh, um, plugin called mm -hmm. Google Analytics. Yep, yep. And that one does appear to affect the performance quite a lot. I don't think it affects uh, affects your your loading speed and and transition speed. Yeah, Google I've been using it for. Thing? The base Yao SEO plugin is a pretty well written one. Yeah. Now the others I've not tried it, so I can tell you the same. But for the specific SEO plugin that you can download off mm -hmm. WordPress ORG, that's a quite well written one. You should be able to use it on ticklish chat posts and it shouldn't affect your loading speed. Yeah. So uh, and sometimes plugins conflict with each other, so it looks like maybe it's that one might not be that. And the plugin is more of a suggestion to help you optimize and change your content. So I don't think it comes off as something that would affect any of the loading speed. Yeah. It's just more of a on on your side kind of kind of plugin. Yeah. So um, surprised that it's uh, seventy percent people using Google and then the rest you using Yahoo and Bling see what they're doing and <laughs> so if anything you should take away I uh, read that content is important link building is important too so we'll work on those two Google changes its algorithms once in a few months so keep it up uh, but working on those two are probably big bets so thank you Tommy yeah. thank you man. I don't think I said it all so I don't I don't have I don't a good time.